Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Woodworking Wisdom. So it's a sunny but cool day in Exminster. I mean, me and Ben will tell you in a, a room that does, like, have a window, well, kind of. But it's definitely a bit chilly, so hopefully wherever you are, the weather's quite nice. Calvin's still sunning himself on a beach somewhere in Australia. I'm not jealous. Okay, so today we're going to make baby's rattle. We've done a baby's rattle before, but using captive rings. Um, the baby's rattle today is something that I can remember seeing when I was about 14 years old with the guy I did a summer school with as a returning tutor, uh, a guy called Cecil Jordan. The baby's rattle involved was presented to Prince William. I've done a little bit of chatting on this and tried to find out where it is. It's currently in the V&A, but I cannot get a picture. So mine's based on that just very loosely from what I can remember. There's a few things I'd love to have, but time is one thing, isn't it? So today, our simple little baby's rattle it's this okay. so we're gonna do one of these all right something just a little bit different no captive rings something quite easy to do and hopefully you get the noise okay so uh, something quite good all right so timber wise you need something that's obviously non-toxic so there's a bit of sycamore i've got some boxwood you could have some cherry some of the fruit woods you can't have things like laburnum or yew wood all right, so stay away from those toxic things if they're going to suck this and anything else. Want it to be nice and clean. There is no polish for the same reasons. Nothing toxic on there, okay? So nice and clean. I've got lymph of boxwood. One of you are going to ask, so I might as well do it. What is it? Let's have a look. I've got my glasses. Um, I cut a bit. This is some of my gold from home. This is oh, six and a half, nearly seven inches long. This end is two inch diameter roughly the other end is 50 mil okay so we we'll turn that over if it clears we've mounted it between a pro drive and a revolving ring center my favorite tail stock center first thing we need to do quite simple stage we're going to take it down to a straight cylinder so we're just getting spindle reckoning gouge let's put him on let's see what we get so the line's going checking we're going forward haven't used the light for a week and a half in here so i've got no idea it's been in handles low gently going to start in the middle speed wise at the moment we're 1400 i'm just knocking off the high stuff so again handle down low if i come back on gently up that's fine i'll cut I'm going to take my speed up a little bit now. Get the light to do the work. Nearly there. I've got a little bit just in between. We don't need to worry too much, but let's just get that last little bit. So we're down to our cylinder. See what we've got. Looks quite clean. We can bring the tool rest in just a touch. I want something to cut our spigot with on the end. So chuck jewel wise. Ugh, let me get the chuck. We're going to use set of O'Donnell jaws. This is the middle set. So these are set to about 38 mil. Let's just see if I can bring the tool rest back a little bit. I want it to hold it whilst I do this. Nearly without dropping it on the floor, that'd be good. Just got a way of supporting it. I want to set the chuck up. Good little tips. I'll move it that way. Chuck jaws when we make our jaws, we put about a quarter inch gap in between when we cut them out. So if I put a pencil in, I'm now back to a true circle. So I know I'm going to get optimum grip all the way around, not little corner points digging in. So that pencil trick's quite worth noting. We need to put spigot on either end of this. So I'll tour us down just a touch. Ben's looking at all your comments and stuff today. Skew chisel, we can use the long point. If I go in a bit to make sure we're clear. And I'm trying to flatten off the end. Checking our diameter, we're close there. I knew we were going to be close. We'll put a little bit of a dovetail on there because the jaws have a dovetail. The other end, we need to square up. And just from looking pretty much there again, I knew there was no lot over. Uh, 
Okay, good. This stage is probably easier to do it here. I'm just going to mark up. This is going to be the top end, our cap. The handle is a little bit smaller, so we might as well use that smaller side down there. 50 mil, two inches from my shoulder point to there. Okay, that's going to give me a parting point. Strip the leg down, so we want knockout bar. I'm going to take the tail stock out as well, just for the fact it gets in the way. I'll be on there, I'll drive the tail stock there, we want a chuck. Put it on. Top end of our rattle where we draw that line, going near the chuck. Take the speed down. I've just taken a bit of work between centers and loaded it into the chuck. So if I drop the speed, a bit more controllable, we'll just check how it spins. Tighten up. Want to separate it, parting tool. So I've got something that's 116, very narrow, so I waste less material. Wood doesn't go on trees, it's getting expensive, but also this is going to mean the grain lines up better. Those little things make a difference. Why no tail stock? It will pinch on the tool. No, I'm creating a little bit of an undercut as I do this. Left and right. Just look at my hand. You can see where it's burying it. Now, if I've got the tail stuck in at this stage, it's going to pinch. Clamp that up. Be pushing pressure. The tail stock end's got a little bit of wobble. I've gone down to eighth of an inch. Take it off. Okay, so that dropping of the speed down is quite important. I'm going to come in from this end now. What a quick look. Just going to see what we have. There's a diameter. Let's turn it around so I can work in there. 40, okay, we've got 40 mil at the moment. Uh, set up a duck gauge to where I want to hollow down to. I'm going to go a little bit look. Bring that down. We need to find our middle. Gonna cut a V. Quite a bit skewed schedule again. Small spindle gouge. So this is in reality box making techniques now. Gonna drill a hole. You could use drill bit in the tail stock if you like. This is quicker for me. A little bit to go. Nearly there. Okay, we'll go with that. Then we're going to go bowl gouge. All right, so I'm just going to bring that down to there. Let me move the tail stock. Ben's got his hand up for me. So while we stop the leg, we'll do that. We're going to just drop the tail stock off the end. Okay, come on then, Ben. What have you got? Hi, Jason. So um, what was the species of wood again? So we could use anything that's non-toxic. So you could have beech, sycamore, cherry, Ash will work. This is boxwood. Okay. Fruit woods will work nicely. Any of those sort of things be fantastic. Boxwood I've got, just the fact it's quite a nice thing. I thought it'd be nice to do a bit box. A bit unusual for some of you, I know. Okay. So can be a good one to work with. It's nice and non-toxic. Just where we've got the camera, camera on me, really, a little bit and stuff. A question from the last demo we did where we did that zebra bowl effect. What gouge have you got? What did you show up into? So we cut a little bit with a quarter inch bow gouge. And customers came in with a question after of what did you show up and what angle? It's a 55 degree bevel angle. Now, if you go back to the video we did on the woodcut and the Tormek grinding jigs, shows you how I sharpened. I sharpened the gouge. Actually, these are the ones I did on the woodcut jig. Good news for some of you if you go into the stuff at the moment on the website. The woodcut jig, um, I, I question something on price, so it's come down a bit. It's actually in the sale as well, so it's £119 now. Really good offer on it at the moment if you wanted one, okay? But that's how I sharpen that. Again, if you've got problems on setting it up, email me. If you bought yourself one, I'll give you the measurements we used. But so good to use, okay? And not just for your gouges. I found it did everything. Um, that's a bit of an eye-opener of a video for me to relate to what it will do, okay? So, we've got our depth hole. 
want to start to create, if like, our hollow section. I've got one behind me that I could show in places, but let's do this bit. I need to get to that hole. So I've just lowered the tool rest down. But on its side, I'm just checking the angle where we are. Centre outwards. There that is. No lovely. Coming down, checking my hole. A bit more. Bit to go on that. Better. Just feeling with my hand what's going on. Nicely done there. Turn the flute over now. We're going to drive down through. Okay. Taking most of the bulk out. Some of you are going to sit there and go, but what are we actually trying to do? Okay. Get this bit. So we're going to hollow it out. So we've done the hollowing. I've got to finish shaping at the moment, just from feel this is more of a point. I want more of a, an egg shape, if you like. I mean, it's a spring baby rattle with an egg shaped top. All right, so having cleaned out the bulk, now no scraper. So I've got my negative rate scraper in here. Gonna have a quick look, see where I am. Gotta go careful because I'm up to that point. Cleaning the star bit to start, we create our shape. Let me come round, feeling what's going on. Up and down the middle to get that little blob always causes problems. Feeling what's trying to go. I'm trying to get an equal wall thickness. Now, this is difficult to describe in ways because how can you get an equal wall thickness? I'm trying to picture what I want on the outside before we've even turned it. So I'm trying to figure out what this is going to look like. So this is the right shape at the moment. Coming up still to a bit of a point, so we can take a bit more from the edge. Come up round. Up to the top, that feels quite nice. A little bit in the middle, still got a little dimple. Pull down through. Okay, last cut. That's good. That feels better. So, feeling what I've got and trying to figure that shape when we do the outside. Okay, Ben, what have you got? Um, so, we've got a question here from, um, from sorry, uh, Nick. He's asking, um, what do you mean when you say a negative rake on the scraper? Oh, God, we could have just a whole session on this now. We could go off. Okay, um, I've got a hollow grind on the front of here. All right, so it changes the angle. Now, my hollow grind give me about a five degree drop coming up to actually a 55 degree battle on the front. So it's quite a steep angle or shallow angle in reality. To sharpen, I really use diamond fail. All right, so there's my scraper. The hollow grind is on the top, it's factory done. I just work around with a diamond fail. What does this do? In reality, from my point of view, it makes the tool less aggressive. That's a weird word, isn't it? That's a, I've got a little bit of a bear on there. Let's just say. Look at that, isn't that lovely? Now, I will say boxwood's a good one to choose for doing this. But in reality, it makes it less aggressive than just a normal scraper with a heavy bear on the top. So I don't want a bear. So all of those little things make a change of what's doing, how it's cutting. All right, the bone and ivory turners of. 150 years ago, quite a common thing. There you go, come up round. Blend it in, I put a flat spot, so I don't, can't, can't have that. That's good. Inside's down there. I also want to do this edge, the wall. So I'm just going to come back a little bit. So I can set the scrape on. I could use my gouge. I'm going to go with that. Just across it. That's pretty good. So we've got an opening where someone might ask, let's have a look, I hollowed 33 millimeters in diameter. I am, if I can find one that will do, that gauge, 35 mil deep. All right. And we're aiming for almost like egg shape internally. 
Next thing we need to do is do a recess for where this is going to join the base section, the handle. Uh, there, bring things in. I'm going to use skew chisel. I'm going to use the side edge here. Not so much the point. I can cut with the right tip. I'm hoping you can see where I'm looking now. I'm going to use that side wall, which is there, nice and sharp. I can use the cutting tip as well. So actually, I'm going to come into a depth, roll the tool a little bit with my wrist, gently come out. So we want to be probably quarter inch deep. My aim is not to open this up too much. So I'll open a little. I don't want to increase it too much. We need a little bit out here. We need enough length. We need it to be straight. All those things add up. So nice and straight and parallel there is important. Just really clean that back edge of what I've got there. Now at this stage, there's some good news. Once this is glued together with the rattle inside it, you can't get to it. So we don't actually need to sand this. That's nice to know, isn't it? Quick and easy to do. There's no point in sanding it. I've got a little, a little bit of fluff on the edge of my step, but that'll be okay. So at this stage, just take this out. Hopefully we can do a quick flick round and see what's going on there. I'm just going to change the piece of wood, put a scrap bit in the chuck. It's been used a couple of times for different things. So I'm hoping we can get that down there. Pinch that in. See where we are on tapers and fit. That's good. So something to make a jam chuck with. Need to remove some of these in the way. One, we'll come back to there. Let's see what that does. So we knocked it off. We're going to want this to fit. This is a bit unusual for me because normally if I make something as a box, I would fit the lid on the base. This I'm using something as a holder just to give me a bit more access. Likewise, I'm using the O'Donnell jaws to give me more access. So I'm going to get my hand in there at the chuck here without hitting the chuck jaws. Carefully removing the tool, trying to get this to fit on. A little bit to go, look. Ooh, too big, look. So, gone too far, that's, that's All right, I'm there, let's tighten that up a bit more. Good thing is I've got scrap material back here I can raid a bit still. That in. Quick look on here. So we stroke that across. It's not a hard, heavy cut. Same again, nice and light. Ooh. The difference between nothing and everything is minute. A spice in a day now, I better go home. Who would have thought that was that, that much different? Yeah, it happens to me occasionally as well. Good thing is it's not a proper lid and base, isn't it? Because we'll be in trouble now. The base would be coming the lid at this rate. Let's start, stop. Now, that's better. Nearly going on there. Clear that up. Just a little bit tight. I haven't seen the wispy bits I've taken off the floor. Now I'm a bit worried on how much to knock off this. So, okay, just going to grab the tail stock. We need that back in. It will help us for a minute. We'll go back to that nice ring centre. So the ring on here, got centre point, ring section. That's going to put pressure in, but not penetrate into those wood fibres. Two rest. Let's see if we can go just a little bit shorter. Give me more room while we do this. Want that off for a second. So we can measure what we've got. Nothing like guessing how deep you are. Let's turn that over. I've got a line. 
A little bit of saliva or moisture for going there. I'm away, but let me just do that to there. That's actually my depth line. We want to allow a little bit about that. All right, okay, come on then. We've got these negative comments that I was shot my lid and base fitting together. <laughs> Shh, no one <laughs> saw it, okay? I've never seen that. I'm meant to be good at this bit. <laughs> okay, come on. Um, Phil is just asking if you turned a slight taper to find the diameter. On the spigot bit, the pine bit, you would do, but you've got to go careful how much tape you add on there. The inside of, if you like, the cap, the boxwood, nice and straight because that's going to fit the base section when we do it later. We need that to be straight to glue it up. Likewise, we do too much tape on here and we bring the tailstock in. You've got the run, the wrist, you will split that, especially when we turn it down to our shape in a minute. So go careful that you can add a little bit of taper to fit it. So where I said it's just that bit tight, I've got a tiny bit of taper. And then I've knocked a little bit off the back, just feeling how that's going on. The little bit of saliva is a good trick. It swells the wood fibers. Okay, so it'll make it expand just a little bit. Right, what do we need? Where are we? Let's have a quick look. I just want to check on things in here now. I've been distracted, trying to see how much thickness we have. I can do a little bit of this. On this day, I'm just going to give me a bit of access. I also want an idea how thin I want to be. So I've just done a small parting cut here on the end of reality just so we can see what thickness that's good that's about three mil now we've got that that gives me my guide now working down to other thing i was looking at we did the outside and the inside is this bit of outside bark in here still i want to see if we can lose that which will be good i'm going to bring our tail stuck up but not too much pressure this stage we've got the two pencil lines short one long one the long ones are overall length, so let's bring this down to clear some weight. We ate feeding tool, just at a parting cut, not using all the tool, taking the density of material into account if you like. Yeah, the over might be sharper there, that's better. Okay, then we can go gouge. We're trying to think of our internal shape now. We're taking our diameter down. This is just bulk removal. Okay, that's pretty good. I can see what I've knocked off there. I've got a slight raise as it comes up. We're going to get that in a second. See where we are. We've got it off. Thickness wise, playing around my fingertips. Good there. A bit thicker out here. Back to the gouge. Rest the bevel. Just along my left thumb. Let's see what we get there. It's good. Still got a bit we can play with. This node's really just building the shape. Let's see what we can get in with our tail rest. So you can see how something like the O'Donnell jaws are working nicely now to give me access in here with that tail stop. I want my skew. Let's go to the oval skew. This is weird. I'm gonna shear scrape. I'm not resting the bevel. Just refining things lightly now. An amazing shaving. Then this end, move things about again. I reckon we've got a little bit of diameter that can come down. I'm resting on the wood, that's better. Something up on here. So we could 
reduce the diameter. It's going to drop a size on the beading tool. Going to roll our bead on her. Bead cut from underneath, create a gap. Use the corner. Go over the handle's got to come up. That's not bad. And we can tidy this up. Right, so this is just building shape really at this stage. We've still got a few things we can refine as we go through. Just checking where we are. That's not bad. This bit's in the way. So we've done most of our heavy work. I'm going to get that out of the way. I've got a little bit that's floating. I want it out so I can see what's going on. So I've gone back to my nice thin parting tool at this stage. Okay, I should bring my hand up just a little bit. Good. Then, not rushing it. I'm going to be quite patient. I can get into here at this stage. Woo -hoo -hoo. Right. Always a risk, isn't it? Okay, let's hold it. I'm sorry I'm blocking it with my hand a little bit. All right, now, just for the sake of getting to it at this stage, I can see on this all later, the bead might become a problem. So I'm just going to go a bit too 40. Bit of 400, just on that bead, really coming round to that tailstock end. Still got to refine the main cap, but at this stage that off we're done with our carrier which is the bit of pine now we're going to put our other length back in here turn it up let's check where it runs that's good okay i think we set our camera up right because i was a bit worried how far out this was going to be that's quite good we've got to get this to fit on here now just for the side cup, because we've got a longer lamp out the chapters. Oh, am I going to cuss and curse it? We're just going to bring that up a little bit. I'm just double checking things now. Which one was it? That one. We've used this as a quick setup, turn that capture. This is that pine, but. Just setting up a measurement, just oversize. Now I can use the building tool again up on here. Use the tail stop just to add that support is what I've done there. All right, we'll do that chapter. Right, this should be just oversized now. Do you think we're further out the chuck? More risk of more vibration and chatter. Now we're going to refine it. So I'm creating just a little bit of sh that chamfer on the edge now, at the very end. Seeing what's going on. Nearly. Left corner to get rid of there. And there. Let's have a look at how that will go on. All right, a little bit loose than I would like, I wonder. But I'm going to be patient. I was going to take just a tiny bit off. Just checking my gap or where it comes together. Got a slight gap on the hold and the join. So what I want to do now, square up that shoulder face. We did the one earlier. I'm going to make sure they come together right. Not too bad. Still getting something there. Might one other place I can look. Square the end up as well. Good. Go with that. So we're on. All right. 
So that fits on and off at the moment. That will glue on. At this stage, I want to hollow the inside of the base. So let's have a quick look at that there. I'm trying to think of where we need to. Setting up a measurement. I'm going to get out about 22 mil. Tail stop can come back out. Clear in the light bed. Need to lose that tail stop. So I drop that off on the floor again for a minute. Just to give me a bit of access. Find our middle. So V. Window gauge, the depth gauge, put it over there, that the pipe. That. Up a tiny bit. Pretty lazy. No skin to go out and do that back cut. Just side me a wall. So we're hollowing out. And this again is about taking the bolt out. Check out that feels not too bad. A little lump in the middle. I'll check it with the depth gauge in a second. Let's do a clean up. So I'll go into the middle first. I've got a lump. Can gently come out. Arm can come over. I'm just checking the side band. I did wonder. I just looked up to try and see the camera just as you flicked it over. Bit square with this now. Let's get to there. Trying to undercut. The join lip. So that's where the scraper it probably looks good on the overhead. This angle. So I can undercut that little lip. So I'm trying to make it thinner beyond it. So a rattle sounds good. Fingertips what's going on. No one's ever gonna get in here, hopefully. It'll just be nice that it looks good. It feels nice. Thank you little stump in the middle so if I go into the center I can drop the handle up and down that'll clear that that's good then tiny bit just in here now right so we've hollowed out we need to know how deep transfer our line so I'm trying to keep this so you guys can see on the camera what I'm doing Pencil point to there, I'll come round. So that's our depth. Make sure we add just a little bit. We need parting okay. tool. I'm going to go slightly thicker than my narrow one. Just to create a break line. Do for a second. Take some of the waste out now. Now we've hollowed inside whilst we've got that nice and solid. That's adding structural strength to hold, if you like, reduce the chatter. Now we can start to shape this. So tip of the gouge. Could come up to there, which I know I've got a little bit to come away. We're starting to build our shape. Tail stock again then. I want to put the lid and the base section together. So we have our cap. Tail stock centre I'm going to change. I'm going to go Hollow revolving centre that we used for long hole boring because it'll fit on that little bead nicely. So I put that into there, put it in there. Lid fitting solution. Got 
a bit there. Now on, we can line our grain up that tree on there. Just have a look. Bring this up gently. Check it spins. So the hollow on there will work nicely with the top of that bead. Hopefully, shouldn't mark it. Checking our shape. Not too bad. I've got a high spot I don't like up here. Just checking something else now. Still haven't quite got that to go together. So start examining what's going on. Where have we got? That's good. Nothing on there. I don't think we've rounded the edge on that. So what I'm looking at, we're still getting quite a line as the two come together. Could be here, too long. Yeah, that's better. So I bring it back up. Right, where was I looking? I didn't like that there. Now it's together, I can build the whole shape. Again, just use my skew. I can hold it at an angle and come up. Let's come up to the top. Upside down. Just to blend that shape together. Make it look like it's one piece. And down through. There's something rough on here, which has probably got a little spot about there, got a knot there. Looking more egg shape. Why use the skew for this ad like I'm doing? I've got deliberately got a bear on the top. This is a finer cut than I can take off my gouge, or even if I rested the bevel with the skew. Just to lightly refine it. Doesn't look too bad. I'm wondering if I'm getting a bit of pull from there. That's better. Go back a little bit. Ugh. Still getting slight shadow light on here. Worse now. So that would suggest I'll be touching up there. two together there better bring that up just to support it okay make this step back in there and there and there that looks a bit bigger let's see if we can just All right so these are more decoration when it comes together so hopefully when it's glued uh, blending just checking i haven't got a little lip on there we're going to say on that a bit later so let's just see what that does Hi. i know i can bring this round so where's my back edge in there that's where the grain lines up better hopefully should hide it just noticing really that the one on the two looks deeper hopefully that'll be all right getting fussy now Okay, take it off. We can put our cap out the way for a second. Again, trying to set things up nicely in here. Can we bring that? No, not quite big enough. So the diameter tapers down. I'd like to support it. Not necessary, maybe. But if I can get something in here, adds a little bit of stability. Just that tail sticks in. I'm not putting any pressure in. And I brought it up literally just so it starts to spin. So I'm not really squeezing forward, but it's just helping support everything between the two points. As much as it's held in the shirt. In that back, it's parallel. That's better. So at this side, 
rapid shot to move with our gout. Then we need to think about a handle shape. So we've just changed the approach of the cut now. We're cutting with the tip. I'm going to come downhill. Better. Skew chisel, let's make something as a V in here. Give a break line between where the handle and the cap starts. So, tip of the skew. That's good. Thickness, what we're we aiming for. So, we've got a bit more here. Let's lose some of this. Blend it together a bit more. So I could stick with the gouge. I've just changed to my skew. It's going to be a bit finer. Come down there. Here, I want to get it square. I'm a bit near the shot. I think we're a bit thick in diameter. Let's have a look at what I've got. Try and get a gauge of ideas of size. So we're just a little bit over. I'm going to blend that in. Right up against the chuck drill. So what you just do sort of there, uh, just come back. Try and get as much access as I can into there. Then plain and cut with that skew chisel coming down. Gently under here. Blend that together. Okay, good. Things lovely. Right, just checking where we are with material in the chuck. Just want to sand it all now. So we'll take out the tail stuck. We're going to bring the cap back in. I'll just secure it with that other centre. Bit of moisture will help it grip. Bring that in. So you get the idea of why we sanded the top of the ball now. So at this stage we can sand it. I'll put the extractor on for this one. A little bit bigger. Oh, that's better. We'll get it in there. Just checking our pressure on the tail stop. Take our speed down a little bit. A 150 grip. Work round it. Down our hand a little bit. One layer. Forty. Just to do a quick burn of slow, we've still got a little bit of work to do, but Oh. Take that off. 
now. We did the prep one, parted through, which we could get away with. But hoping just enough in there to get there. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, I the lid on the floor. We want the tail stop center just to come up. See where we are. That's not bad. So I've just got enough gap on the chuck jaws. Turn a gap to and I'm gripping and again I'm not putting loads of pressure in. Just a quick and easy way of reversing that. Not this down. Um, quite a bit of shake. Couple of little things to do to this yet. So I'm trying to extend our shape just a little bit more. Skew chisel. Getting as far as I can. Want to find that down. A bit big in diameter there. And blend it in. Take the light speed down. Just so I can support it with my hand. Tip of the skew. Right tip there. Good. Tiny sand on this. Not going to do a lot because actually we've got to refine the shape in another way yet. For sure. Being a bit secretive about this this afternoon. I'm not I'm trying to. Blend that in. I've got a little bit of a point on the end, so let's lose that. That's the two four. Ah, oh, four hundred. Okay, we take that out. Then just changing the chuck. Sanding out the way. Sanding disc. There's quite a lot in here like this. So this is Velcro back. Hook and loop. Bring our dusting back in. Now at the moment this will roll about. Alright, sorry bad. I've got your dad on here. Look, right? So it'll roll about no matter where you put it. It also is a bit big. So to make it more of a teething thing, we're going to sand a bit off. So I'll just turn the extractor off and Take our speed down a bit and our dust back into there by working one side, roll it a bit. Turn it over 190, add it from there. Yeah, tell it. So we're getting that section either side, I'll show you in a sec. Just going to blend together a bit, working up to the top now. Turn over again. A little bit more. Checking where we're coming up to on each side when I take it off. So I'll just have a quick visual look to try and see what's happening. Turn me up. Ooh. So this has got, I think, a 120 grit on. Again, now we're getting that action that it won't roll off the light bed. I'm going to change our disc. We won. Had sander. So on the jaws I've got in here, I hope it does just grip in the middle of the longer mounting jaws. So really adapting the live a little bit now for different tasks. 240 grit on here and I'm trying to roll it into the edges now so I can blend it together. A little bit on the end to get. So I'll make this soft. That's 
We're getting there. Take that back out. It's a great way of adapting your lathe. Now, the nice thing with adding a sander to your lathe, like we just done, if your lathe is variable speed, so much more controllable. Okay. Then, just a sec, let me just grab I want that for a minute so I don't throw them everywhere. Okay, mate, what you got? Um, so, a question here from 999. They're asking, um, how can you stop the accessory jaws? From coming out of the SK100. What, to stop them coming out all together? All the way out. Okay, what we got here. So you want to take them out or you don't? Uh, they want to stop them from coming right. all the way out. Right, now it out. depends on the age of the chuck. Okay, and I'm just trying to think, and it's weird because I did chuck video last week. I'm trying to remember what I've got and if I can see them. All right, so I'm just really examining the chucks we've got here. I've got a pile of chucks in front of me as well, but we'll have a look. Um, I think it's in this one. So it depends on the age of the chuck. What have I got in there if I bring them in? Okay, just about. I get my chubby finger out of the way as well. Let me put my glasses back on. Now, the reason I say the age of the chuck, the newer chucks have... Even the newer mounters. I've got these some newer ones in here, Ben. Four is that one. Look, I'll go four there. Okay, this is a good one. It's all right. Right, finally found one. What I'm looking for now, down inside the chuck, nearest me here where my pencil is, there's a little grub screw. Come back there. Okay, down in here. That's on the bottom of that mounting jaw. So it has a grub screw that'll go there. If I put the grub screw in when it's in the chuck and I close the jaws down, I'll take that in and out, that will limit how far they go. If I take the grub screw out, no, they will clear the chuck totally. If it's newer chuck, it will also have this little thing as a red dot indicator. So the red dot indicator will tell you, this one might limit it because we've got the screw in it. it might wind the chuck jaws out. Um, can't quite see it. So the limiter comes into play how far that will go. On the one I think I've got on the lathe, because we regularly swap jaws in and out of here quite quickly. We tend to prefer this as a system. Number four is over here. We'll wind it out. We should get a bit of travel on the 114. Red dot. I wonder if this has got one. No, that's got a limiter though, so I can't get to the red dot again. Okay. But basically, that red dot that I've looked at in the side of here will come an indicator of how far out you can come. If it comes out of the, the side of the body, that tells you how far you can go. But again, that is newer checks. All right. We're talking the last three or four years in reality, probably a little bit before. But the screw and those things are quite new features but that will limit it. Other thing, obviously, number four, if you put your mounter and your jaw on number four, number four is always the first jaw that will come out. So if the jaws are numbered and the mounting jaw is in the right place where you bolt them together, that will give you an indicator of where this one's going to slide in and out if you go too far. All right, because, yes, if you do overextend them, they're going to come out. That little thing I started with earlier, a pencil gap can be a big guide. That's a true circle. So I would tend to say, and as much as this will grip, and I don't know how where it shows up on your cameras and videos at home and stuff, this is now beyond a true circle. So actually when this is gripping, if you're gripping internal, you're only biting right on the little corner edges. 
So you haven't actually got much surface contact. If we come into where this is a true circle, and I can use that pencil, and I'm sorry if I'm boring some of you, but it's good information, that now will grip all the way around. And that is any chuck, not just ones we make, because the jewels are machined at a circle, there's got to be somewhere where they're made as a true circle. I know for my jewels, that works nicely to give me a true circle. And therefore, I have actually got more surface contact area holding the workpiece. So even with this little thing today, I wanted more surface contact because I'd come out of the chuck longer when I hollow. All right, so hoping that answers your question a little bit on which jaw and why and whatever. Okay, that throws me totally now, is not it? I mean, let's move things out of the way. Uh, that bit, whatever that fits on, we've got this end, so you've got like a teething stick. That'll push on. I can line the grain colour up a little bit. We can glue it. It'll be glued there. But you need something to make you rattle, don't you, really? So oh, and here, the secret weapon. What are they? Dried peas. All right, again, you've got to think of something non-toxic. Um, so if it does get broken and the peas come out, all right, they go there. You can't have ball bearings. I could line the grain up when I glue it. Hopefully I'll make a bit of a noise. Okay. Um, give peas a chance. So you see what happens, okay? That's quite an easy little bit. So when you come to glue this on, last one, I put a little bit of glue around on here, glue it on, let it dry. All right. No finish because you want it on toxic. If you really want to put something, I suppose you could put a sunflower oil in, but actually that'd be quite nice. Um, those of you that might not have kids, um, that you can... Get involved with a band if you like. I don't know. Right? Bad band loves it. He's just you know, okay. Hopefully, something is nice to do. Um, as I said, if you've got kids, I've lost you. And now, look, especially you've got a new baby. I mean, we've got two or three. Matt, who helps us out with videos in here, his wife had a baby a few weeks ago, so he will want one. My brother's got, I've got a nephew, so you know where this is going, don't you? This is you know, okay. So they're gradually getting taken up here, sadly. Ben, you got any other questions? Nice, quiet afternoon. Fantastic. Good. All right. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I've explained things. If you have any queries on the things we've done, be it today, be it last week, come on, send us that question because we'd love to hear from you. All right. We do answer them, I promise. Hope you enjoyed. Give us a thumbs up. We will see you next week. All right. For more Woodworking Wisdom.